I've been asked to uh, do an interesting project, making a base for this table for my wife, Christine. So this is a coffee table. She's not too happy with the base, which is pretty ugly, as you can see. So I'm gonna try making a really nice curved, sculpted base for this out of wood. So here you see uh, roughly what the table is going to look like with a brass top and a wooden base shaped like so. Here you will see uh, how I intend to block up the wood. I've dressed a whole bunch of the, the timber. I've cut it all to 200 mil widths so that uh, it fits into my little uh, Roblin thicknesser. And so I've, I've glued the base together and what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to uh, stack the sections up on the sides and from the center, I'm gonna draw a radius to uh, cut each piece on the bandsaw. You can see here how I've designed the piece so that uh, if I stack up these 200 millimeter wide or eight inch wide pieces, um, I'll stack them up like so, and then uh, I'll cut them uh, and shape them with the, with the uh, Arbitec tools. Um, and that's how I'll do it. And uh, here I've, I've worked out the, the actual radius or the diameter of each, each section so that as I stack it up, I, from the center I can describe that radius and I'll cut them on the bandsaw. So that's how I intend to do it. Um, now for some of the technical side of this particular piece. What I've done here is I've made a little device here with uh, a pivot and uh, a piece of thin wood in which I've measured the radiuses of each of the pieces and uh, I'll use it to find my line for each of, these, each of these pieces. You can see there are various pieces here at different widths the standard piece being uh, 200 mil, but I can go smaller as I go up into, into the top of the, uh, of the table. So I've plotted on the computer all the different radiuses. Now I'm doing this quite accurately. However, um, given that it's gonna be freehand shape, it doesn't have to be too accurate, but you do, do want to get your maths right. Um, otherwise you'll end up with the wrong size pieces of wood. So what I'm doing here, now each piece, I'll simply place this pivot point in some spot. And what I've done here to find the, the wood is gonna go right to the outside. So this first piece will go right to the outside of this width as it does here. So you see this is the outside of this particular piece, right? And now I'm gonna scribe an arc that will um, show me where I need to cut it. So on the very corner, I put that pivot point there, and now I'm ready to scribe. So I've simply drilled a hole in this piece of wood that the pencil fits through, and theoretically, I can now trace that line, which I can. So I'll need two of those, one either side, so that's that one, which I'll now cut on the bandsaw, and the other side. So there's the second line. So now I've cut all of the uh, all of the relevant pieces and I've numbered them uh, from the top uh, from the bottom to the top. So they're all under here. Um, so they're all cut to the right radius. And so now I begin the process of blocking it up. So this is the circular base, and now I'm going to block up the, the sides coming up in a nice curve here. Now before I, I block it up, I've got a, a little bit of glue on the top there, and just to make sure it's nice and level before I block it onto it, I'm just gonna put the uh, sanding attachment onto the, onto the leveling guide for the power carver, and uh, then I'll, be, I'll just get it nice and perfectly flat. So then uh, it should all join up nicely.
I've measured out I've measured out the actual radius that I need for each each piece. All right, so I've calculated that and I've transferred it onto this. And so this is what I use to cut them out. So now if I place this, I've, I've marked that, so I just have to line it up with the, the center of the circular base, which I've lined it up. And now this is the first, uh, first piece that I've got to put into place. And now I can just simply line it up with that to get its correct position for where I'm going to glue it. So you need three points, one there, that looks pretty good, and one there. So there's your three points, you just line that up, get that right, check your position, and that's how I'll find the position of each of the pieces. What I've decided to do is to, I might just do one piece at a time, but I might just have a go first and seeing how many I can stack up in one go, because I'm using a, a slow setting glue. So it does give me the option of uh, stacking them all up, although I think it might be a bit too difficult to clamp, so I'll, I'll just see how I go. You may have noticed that I had to put um, these narrower pieces in the front into this corner, they're just glued into place. They're really just uh, spaces they're going to be wasted, so that is this piece here which goes in front. And they'll be mostly shaved away when I when I when I uh, when I do the sculpting. But uh, I just needed a little bit more so I can get that nice curve in here. So I've just glued that front bit on there. One thing too is uh, I am being quite precise with the with the gluing. I've straightened it. Uh, I've, I've uh, straightened all the edges and squared them so that I get a really nice join. But the fact is, I'm using uh, epoxy glue, which is a good filling glue, and uh, so this will have quite a few so-called flaws, well, what I call features, throughout it, uh, throughout the wood. And uh, I don't mind filling any gaps or anything like that as I go, um, and then sculpting through it. Um, and you'll see that later on when I get closer to the finish that that these so-called flaws become features and uh, um, I quite like that, especially when you shape through them. So this is the last of the uh, blocking up. So uh, now I'm going to put a cross piece here. I'm going to have to recess it into the top, um, and I'll screw it. I'll screw it on so that I can take it off, so that I can get access to here, and then I'm going to smooth all this out on the outside. The reason for this cross piece is that it has a hole in the centre which holds the top on because the the brass top has a, a bolt which will thread through it and that'll center it on this, this round section. So uh, nearly time to do the fun part, which is the sculpting. So I'll just work out the position for this board. All right, what I've done here is uh, I've just got a piece of scrap plywood and I'm just gonna make a template and then I'll use that template to guide the uh, turbo shaft to cut out that, hollow out that section. So here I have a turbo shaft 
and I just set the depth gauge on it, which is this ring around it here, and I've just set it to 40 mil, which is 20 mil for the board and 20 mil for the plywood. So that should be the right depth. Might just give it a little bit more. And then I'll just machine that out. Now, of course, you can do this with a router um, or even do it by hand. Just uh, cut it out with a tenon saw and maybe uh, chisel it out. But uh, I've got quite a few routers. Uh, uh, sorry, I've got a, quite a few angle grinders. And of course, the, the turbo shaft does a good job of this sort of thing. So. So I just rounded off the edges here to fit in the uh, in the uh, holes. Now this bar will serve two functions. One is to keep the strength across it because I'm going to thin this down and it's all side grain, so you want want something to brace it. And the other function is to actually centre the tabletop, which will be on top of it. Um, and because it's a brass top, you won't see this piece of wood underneath. You'll only see that. Now to begin the shaping. 